Is there something teachers can do to do this more effectively? So you, you, mentioned, you mentioned the textbook. Yeah. So, so what, what are the additional things you can add on top of this whole old school traditional way of mm -hmm, teaching mm -hmm. that can improve the, the process? Mm -hmm. So I do think there's a way of teaching maths that changes everything for kids uh, and teachers. So I'm one of five writers of a new framework for the state of California, a new maths framework. It's coming out next year. And we are recommending through this maths framework that people teach in this way. It's called Teaching to Big Ideas. Mm -hmm. So... Um, at the moment, people have standards that have been written, and then textbooks have taken these standards and made not very good questions. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the standards, like I have some written down here, just reading the standards, it makes it, math seem really boring and uninspiring. What, what, are, what are the kind of, can you give a few examples? What So this is an, an interesting example. In third grade, there are three different standards about unit squares. <laughs> Okay. Um, so this is one of them. A square with side length one unit, called a unit square, is said to have one square unit of area and can be used to measure area. And that's something you're expected to learn. That is something. That, so that's a standard. The textbook authors say, oh, I'm going to make a question about that. And they translate the standards into narrow questions. And then you measure success by your ability to deliver on, yes. all, on these standards. Mm -hmm. So the standards themselves, uh, I, I think of maths, and many people think of maths in this way, as a subject of like a few big ideas and really important connections between them. Um, so like an, you could think of it as like a network map of ideas and connections. Mm -hmm. And what standards do is they take that beautiful map and they chop it up like this into lots of little pieces and they deliver the pieces to schools. And so teachers don't see the connections between ideas, nor do the kids. So anyway, this is a bit of a long way of saying that what we've done in this new initiative is we have set out maths as a set of big ideas mm -hmm. and connections between them. So this is um, grade three. Mm -hmm. So instead of there being 60 standards, we've said, well, you can pull these different standards to get in with each other and... Um, also value the ways these are connected. And by the way, for people who are just listening, we're looking at a small number of uh, like big concepts within mathematics, mm -hmm. square tiles, measuring fraction, shape, and time, and then how they're interconnected. Mm -hmm. As, and so the goal is for, this is for grade three, for example. Yeah. Uh, and so we've set out for the state of California, the whole of mathematics K, 10 as a set of big ideas and connections. So we know that teachers, it works really well if they say, okay, so a big idea in my grade is measuring. Um, and instead of reading five procedural statements that involve measuring, they think, okay, measuring is a big idea. What rich, deep activity can I use that mm. teaches measuring to kids? And as kids work on these deep, rich activities, maybe over a few days, turns out a lot of maths comes into it. Mm -hmm. So we're recommending that let's not teach maths according to all these multiple, multiple statements and lots and lots of short questions. Instead, let's teach maths by thinking about what are the big ideas and what are really rich, deep activities that teach those big ideas. So that's the, like how you teach it and maximize learning. What about like from a school district perspective, like measuring how well you're doing, you know, the grades and tests and mm, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you throw those out or is, there, is it possible? I'm not a fan of grades and tests um, myself. I think grades are fine if they're used at the end of a course. So at the end of my maths course, I might get a grade because a grade is meant to be a summative measure. It kind of describes your summative achievement. But the problem we have in maths classrooms across the U.S the US is people use grades all the time, every week or every day right. even. My own kids, when they went through high school, technology has not helped with this. When they went through high school, they knew they were being graded for everything they did, everything. And not only were they being graded for everything, but they could see it in the grade book online and it would alter every class they went into. So this is the ultimate, what I think of as a performance culture. 
you're there to perform, somebody's measuring you, you see your score. Um, so I think that's not conducive for deep learning. And yes, have a grade at the end of the year, but during the year, you can assess kids in much better ways. Like teachers can, a great way of assessing kids is to give them a rubric that kind of outlines what they're learning over the course of a unit or a few weeks. So kids can actually see the journey they're on. Like this is what we're doing mathematically. Sometimes they self-assess on those units. And then teachers um, will show where, what they can, what the kids can do with a rubric and also write notes. Like, you know, in the next few weeks, you might like to learn to do this. Or, um, so instead of kids just thinking, about well, I'm an A kid or a B kid or I have this letter attached to me, they're actually seeing mathematically what's important and they're involved in the process of knowing where they are mathematically. At the end of the year, sure, they can have a grade, but um, during the year, they get these much more informative measures. I, I do think this this might be more for college, but maybe not. I, some of the best classes I've had is when I got a special, like set aside, like the, the, the professor clearly saw that I was interested in some aspect of a thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have a few in mind and, one in particular, when he said that um, he kind of challenged me. So this is outside of grades and all of that, that kind of stuff. That basically it's like reverse psychology. I don't, I don't think this can be done. And so I gave everything to do that mm -hmm. particular thing. So this was happened to be in an artificial intelligence class. But I, I think that like special treatment of taking students who are especially like excellent at a particular little aspect that you see their eyes light up. I I often think like maybe it's tempting for a teacher to think you've already succeeded there, but they're actually signaling to you that like you could really launch them on their way. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I don't know, that's too much to expect from teachers, I think, to 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 pay attention to all of that because it's really difficult. But I, I just kind of remember who are the biggest <laughs> the most important people in, in the history of my life of education. And it's those people that who really didn't just like inspire me with their awesomeness, which they did, but also just, they pushed me a little, yeah. like they gave yeah. me a little push. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that requires focusing on the quote unquote, excellent uh, uh, students yeah. in the class. Yeah, I think what's important though, is teachers to have the perspective that they don't know who's gonna be excellent at right. something before right. they give out the activity. Exactly. And in our camp classes that we ran, um, sometimes students would finish ahead of other students. And we would say to them, can you write a question that's like this but different? Um, Oh, and, and over time, we encouraged them to like extend mm. things further. I remember we were doing one activity where kids were working out the borders of a square and how big this border would be in different case sizes. And one of the boys came up at, at the end of the class and said, I've been thinking about how you do this with a pentagon. And I said, that's fantastic. How do you, how, what does it look like with a pentagon? Go, f you know, find out, see mm. if you can discover. So I didn't know he was going to come up and say that. And I didn't have in my head, like, this is the kid who could have this extension task. But you can still do that as a teacher. Um, when kids get excited about something or they're doing well in something, have them extend it, go further. Mm -hmm. It's great. And, and then you also, like, this is like teacher and coach. You could say it in different ways to different students. Like, for me, the right thing to say is... Uh, almost to say, uh, I, I don't think you could do this. This is too hard. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I need to hear. Mm -hmm. It's just like, no, I, you know, you, you, there's an immediate push. But with some people, if they're a little bit more, I mean, it's all has to do with upbringing, just yeah. how your genetics mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. They might be much more, that might break them. Yeah, that might break them. Mm -hmm. and so you have to be also sensitive to that. I mean, teaching is really difficult. <laughs> it is really difficult. Uh, for, for this very reason.